Hey folks, Dr. Rob Jones here, HeyDrRob.com. If you've been watching my previous videos, we've been talking all about spine safety and keeping your spine in lordosis. Again, favorite word in the English language. If you're in lordosis, you are not breaking down. It's that simple. Okay, so one of my favorite things to hate in practice is when a patient comes in and they tell me they have a piriformis syndrome, okay? This syndrome is overused more than anything I see in the musculoskeletal world. The piriformis is a small little muscle that sits under the gluteals, which are right here, okay? And it sits just like this. It goes from the front of the sacrum into the femur, which is your leg bone. Its job is to stabilize the hip joint right here, and it's to create external rotation. So just like this marker, it's gonna pull the hip back like this. So in essence, what it's gonna do is it's gonna do this to your foot. And if you actually stand up and try this, the piriformis sits about right here. When you do this, you can actually feel a contraction. Again, your glute is here. If we take that off, the piriformis sits about just like this. So when I do that, I can feel it contract. That muscle basically has a little bit of relation to the back as far as this, okay? So this is your ilium, which is that bone right there. This is your sacrum, okay, which is that bone right there. You've got your hip joint here, and then you've got your hip coming down like that. This is the back, okay? The piriformis runs about just like this, okay? It's a small little muscle, you know, about the width of both of my fingers. Now, when the sciatic nerve, which I've explained before, if you don't remember what that is, you can go back to the previous videos. It comes out of your spine at a couple different levels, it comes down, it goes in behind that piriformis muscle and then goes down your leg, okay? And it gives you strength to your hamstrings, your calf, when it is impinged by a disc, just like this guy right here, okay? Again, there's the disc bulge, right? We've bent forward too much. There's the disc bulge pushing on the nerve. It's gonna send a signal down your leg. If there's enough compression on the nerve, that's gonna give you sciatica. Now, I can't tell you literally how many hundreds of patients have come in and said, oh, Dr. Rob, my massage therapist or my doctor or my online guru told me I have a piriformis syndrome because I have pain in my butt. I need to stretch my piriformis. I need you to stretch my piriformis. Well, I'm here to tell you, folks, most likely you do not have a piriformis syndrome. Okay, let me tell you why. If you have a piriformis syndrome, number one, it's gonna be painful while you're active, okay? Now, piriformis syndromes you'll see in runners periodically because again, that muscle is having to contract to help stabilize that hip. So as you're cycling through when you're running, you know, it has potential to get tight. So you are gonna to wanna to stretch it after a run. Somebody who has a true piriformis syndrome is gonna have pain in that spot when they load bear, okay? They're gonna step down and go, oh gosh, that hurts. Oh gosh, that hurts. And because it's an external rotator, it's gonna make your foot and your femur do this, okay? Just like I said before, it sits here and it contracts. It externally rotates like that. So if you're gonna have a piriformis, you are gonna see your foot kind of out like this if it's really bad, or if it's just not horrible, when you lay down, let me get on my table here. When you lay down, if you've got a tight piriformis, you're gonna see that affected side. Your foot is actually gonna sit externally rotated like this because of the tightness in the muscle, okay? In a really bad case, it's gonna be cranked like that. If I try to take that leg and bring it back, the person's gonna, gonna basically give me a shot of, of ouch because it hurts so much, it's gonna give them a shot of pain. Okay, so this is how I want you to differentiate this from the sciatica of a disc bulge, okay? Again, that sciatic nerve goes underneath the piriformis. In about 12-ish percent of the population, it literally pierces the piriformis. Those people may get some pain, but that's a very small portion of the population. Again, piriformis syndrome, okay? You are going to see pain with walking or weight bearing, okay? You're gonna have localized pain in the buttock, 
And you may or may not have a little referral going down here, but, but again, it's pain walking and it's localized pain. When you have pain from a disc bulge, like we've talked about, you are gonna get pain sitting, you are gonna get pain bending, you're gonna get pain driving because you've been sitting, and you're gonna get this deep ache in your rear end. And that's, the, that's your sciatic nerve coming from the disc bulge or disc process that you have because you've been flexing and taking your spine out of lordosis, okay? So the way we're gonna differentiate, if you have discogenic, which means pain from the disc, buttock pain, okay? Again, versus the piriformis pain, you're gonna have pain sitting that is going to worsen and it's gonna feel like a deep ache in your butt. You're most likely gonna get better when you get up and start to walk, okay? The longer you sit, that pain may go further down your leg, not just in your buttock, but also in your hamstring, okay? Now, another telltale on this is when you're sitting, if you have piriformis pain, again, not piriformis, sciatic pain, and you actually start to do some extension while you sit, or if you look at a previous video of mine and you use a towel roll and you put it behind your back like that, and now all of a sudden you go, oh, interesting, that pain is no longer in my buttock. Guess what, folks? That's not a piriformis syndrome. That is a discogenic process in your lower back, pushing on the sciatic nerve, referring pain into your butt. So I would really like you to try this. If you have pain sitting, pain that worsens with prolonged sitting that will maybe even move into your buttock, pain when you drive, when you sit on your couch, all the stuff I've mentioned in previous videos, do some extension of your spine. Look at my videos on disc prevention and how to mitigate a disc bulge. Go back to the seated extensions where you grab your knees and pull back. If that pain leaves your buttock and actually goes away, guess what? It's not a piriformis syndrome, okay? Pain walking that is sharp, not a deep, dull ache. Localized pain with your foot rotated, that's a piriformis syndrome you're gonna need some soft tissue work. Why am I bringing this up? The reason I'm bringing this up is if you're told you have a piriformis syndrome and all you do is stretch your piriformis, you're stretching the symptoms, folks. You're not gonna get better. This is an actual syndrome that, yes, if you have true piriformis syndrome with the pain walking, the localized pain in the buttock, the externally rotated foot and leg, rotated, there we go, foot, and leg, okay, yes, you need to get soft tissue work, you need to get that massaged, you need to stretch it out. But again, if you have these symptoms and you're basically being told you have a piriformis syndrome, you're not gonna fix the problem with stretching. You can stretch till the cows come home, but you're not gonna address the, sim the, the, the source of the problem, you're addressing the symptoms of the problem. You have to take out the flexion, you have to take out the repetitive bending that is gonna create the discogenic problem giving you those symptoms. You have to take out the backbreakers, you have to take out the backbreaker core moves and the stretches, okay? So the bottom line in this is you have to get the appropriate care for the symptoms. So again, if you have these symptoms, pain sitting, that gets dull and achy, that gets worse and worse and worse, and you get better when you get up and walk, you probably don't have a piriformis syndrome. So look at my previous videos on how to actually correct that deep aching buttock pain that's going to come with disc issues and flexion intolerance, and we're going to clear up all these symptoms and you're gonna know how to create a solution to that buttock pain and you're not just gonna sit there and spin your wheels. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. Leave me a comment if you have a question for me. If, if you have a situation that you're not sure of, leave me a comment, I'll see if I can help you with it. Hit me up on the socials. And again, like always, don't forget to protect your back.